Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here's Google Apps Updates Roundup number 62 and in this episode I'm going to show you 20 new features and the changes so let's jump right in. The first app we have today is YouTube Music and the library got a complete revamp. As you see everything is in a list view with filters at the top but if we're going to compare this to the old design on my Pixel 4a if you take a look here we have this carousel at the top that shows the recent activity with sub menus that takes you to the relevant songs and the playlists but now you can achieve the same thing using the filters so let's start from the top to bottom here at the top left corner you can switch between your library downloads and device files and you can reach the same menu by tapping on the library button one more time after that we have some filters here the first one is called playlists and when you tap on it it will show you more filters to dig deeper into this classification so for example if you want only the downloaded playlists you can do this and then remove the filters by tapping on the x uh, if you want to jump to your subscriptions you need to tap on artists first and then tap on subscriptions and so on and so forth the recent activity carousel has been replaced with a history button at the top right corner tapping on it will show you the same thing and also here we have some filters or uh, sorting options like the recent activity recently added or recently played then we have a new playlist floating button that will allow you to create a new playlist without going inside any pages so if you're going to compare this to the old design to create a new playlist you have to go to playlists first and you will see the new button here at the top you will also see another floating button when you go to songs as you see here I have shuffle all it's a floating button now and instead of being located at the very top so when I go to songs on the old design the shuffle all button is at the very top which is no longer the case so that's pretty much everything you need to know about the new YouTube music library but there is only one downside to share with you here when you choose songs and then choose downloaded and then start playing your downloaded tracks as you see here when I tap on the next button it doesn't move to the next track as if it's a playlist but instead it will create a separate radio with different recommendations based on the song I selected and instead of going through them one by one uh, previously we used to have a playlist called downloaded songs that will allow you to play only the downloaded songs in order but this option is no longer available in the new library and now it's time for today's sponsor if you are interested to purchase original windows 10 and office keys head over to cdkeyoffer.com using the links in the description below then apply my special promo code id20 to get extra 25 percent discount windows 10 oem key will cost you 16.23 dollars which is very affordable to complete your purchase choose your preferred payment method input the details and once the payment is done you will be redirected to the orders screen to view your code click on the view keys slash codes button then click on get the key to activate your windows 10 oem key copy the code from the website head over to your windows settings then system scroll all the way down and click on about then product key and the activation and finally click on a change paste the code in the text field and click on next then activate and now your original windows key got activated for more offers please check the links in the description below and now let's get back to the review the second app we have is google messages and it got some visual tweaks the first one is the new icon for the start chat button as you see here in the previous version it used to have a fill color but now it's outlined the second change is in the side menu now it's much wider and covering more space and instead of having this empty area the third change is in the account switcher menu as you see now it supports material U instead of having the old design like before next the clock app and it got a new nice feature when you expand your alarm and then tap on the default alarm sound you will notice a new record now button tapping on it will take you to the recorder app to create your own alarm sound so let's try this as an example wake up as you see this will be your alarm from now on and if you want to delete the recording you can tap on the ellipses and remove it or you can also record a new one and have multiple ones in the list to choose between them app number four is google contacts and now when you change the profile picture of your contact you will see a redesigned page with three options at the top but if we're going to compare this to the previous one 
If you take a look here, when I tap on it, it asks first if I want to take a photo or choose one. When I tap on it, choose photo, it will show me the same old file picker. But now this page is much more organized and looks better. In addition to a new option here called illustrations. From this page, you can search Google illustrations for some photos to put to your contacts. So if you chose this one, for example, you can also apply some edits here. And when you tap on a choose, this will be the new profile picture. You can tap on remove or you can change it if you want. And here's how the Google Photos tab looks like. And finally, the device photos. Next, Google Play Store. And it got a redesigned search bar at the top. As you see, the search bar is no longer filling the entire width and it doesn't include the account switcher menu. But if we're gonna compare this to the old design, you will see here the search bar is covering everything. Also, we got a new button here that takes you right away to the notifications and offers page. And instead of tapping on the profile menu first and then go to notifications and offers, so that will save you some steps in addition to the new design. And this is how the notification counter looks like if you have any. The second change in Google Play Store, I won't be able to show you on camera, but I can explain how it works. As per 9 to 5 Google, now if you have a family group and you are the family organizer, but you didn't set up a family payment method, the family members can still request to make purchases. You will receive these requests and make the payments using your own payment method. And once done, they will receive a confirmation email with the purchase and you will be able to see the purchases in your history. And it has some limitations and stuff, so I'm gonna leave the article link in the description if you're interested to know more about the new feature. Next, Google Meet. And now it supports emoji reactions. So here is one of the meetings I'm already in, and when I tap on the ellipses, you will see here a carousel at the top with a set of emojis. When you tap on any of them, you will see your reaction at the top left corner of your viewfinder, and it will also appear briefly at the bottom left corner. Next, the recorder app. And I finally got the speakers label feature, but to be able to use it, you need to activate the backup option. So when I tap on turn on backup, it will ask me which account I want to use. When I tap on backup recordings, it says here detect and label speakers. So I can tap on continue and then agree to the terms. Once done, the feature will be activated. And to confirm the feature is active, tap on the account switcher, then go to the settings and scroll down and you will see here a toggle called the speaker labels. So let's put it into action to see how it works. So here I have two phones and I have two different YouTube videos. So I'm going to play each one separately and see how the app will respond to different voices. Today's sponsor, Stamps.com. Stamps.com has been teaming up with the post office. To collect your biometric data, using your camera and your microphone to learn how you react to certain... Now I'm done with the test and if you take a look at it one more time, you will notice some sort of flag while labeling and recording at the same time. But once I stopped and saved the recording, everything is now labeled perfectly. And I did take a look at the words and they are accurate and correct. Here is a speaker one, which is Jerry, rig everything. And speaker two is Mr. Who's the boss. If you want to edit the speaker name, you can simply tap on this button at the top left corner and you will see here a drop down arrow next to the speaker name. Tapping on it will give you the rename option. So you can give it a name. And as you see now, I have the correct name for speaker number two. Uh, there is another option here called create a new speaker and it will allow you to give it a name as well. And as you see now, it will not rename the one you have, but it will create a new one instead. So it's ex pretty much the same thing. So you can simply use the renaming option. So I will return it back to Mr. Who's the boss. Tap on save and once done, you can tap on save at the top right corner. You will notice here that the bubble has a different shape and it also uses the initial letter of the name instead of using a circular bubble. And when you also go to the audio tab, you will notice here there is a bubble showing the speaker name. So here is number one. And when I scroll more, I have the letter M for Mr. Who's the boss and so on and so forth. One more thing I noticed while editing, when you tap on any of the words, it will give you an option called split from here. And this will allow you to organize the transcript the way you want. And once done, you can tap on save. And also when you go back to the full list of recordings, you will see here in the recording description, the number of speakers. It says here, Jan 20th, two speakers, Dubai.
And if you want to turn the feature on or off while recording, you will see a button here at the bottom right corner. Tapping on it will allow you to do so. Also keep in mind that the speaker labels feature is also available on devices using the first gen tensor chipset like the Pixel 6a and the 6 Pro, but you won't find it on devices using Snapdragon processors like the Pixel 5. Now let me show you some other features in the recorder app that I've never mentioned before. And the first one, when you share a recording and then choose the link option, it will give you the chance to choose between public so anyone with the link can view or uh, share with specific people. And in this case, it will give you the contact list to choose the emails you want. And the third option is called private. So you will be the only one who can view the recording. And after you choose any of the options, and try to share the recording one more time. It will save your preference and give you the chance to copy the link on the same setting right away, or you can tap on a change to change it later. The other feature is the ability to change the playback speed by tapping on the ellipses at the top right corner. You will see playback speed over here. Tapping on it will give you the option to choose between 0.5x up to 3x. And lastly, when you go to the recorder app settings and then go to the transcription language, you will see three new ones over here. The first one is English India. The second one is Spanish Spana. And we have also French Canada. All the features I mentioned about the recorder app are available for all Pixel models using Tensor G1 or G2. Next, Google Translate. And now it will allow you to download 33 new languages for offline use. And you can do this by tapping on the account switcher menu, then downloaded languages, and you will see them over here. And the full list is now showing on the screen if you want to take a look at it. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I spotted in January 2023. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. And if you spotted any Google app feature, please let me know in the comments or reach me out on social media to start including in my future episodes. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you the next video.